So if you remember the previous verses, we covered this idea of asank. Guru Nanak Dev Ji covered the expression, the experience of being in this euphoria, this bliss of simply counting that which cannot be counted, trying to state the variations of the universe, the wide spectrum of the universe. But now from that spectrum of all that is good and all that is evil and all of the different varieties of creation, from going all the way out there, in this body Guru Nanak Dev Ji brings it firmly back to us. So Guruji starts with Pariye Hat Per Tan De. So what do these words mean? Pariye means to be filled. Yeah? Pariya means to be filled, and in this particular case, we're talking about being filled with dirt, filthy. Hat, your hand, bare, your feet, tan, meaning your body, and de also means body. So tan de means all over your body, your whole body. Pariya hat per tan de. So if we were to translate this, we would say, if the hand, the foot, and the whole body is filled with dirt. And what Guruji is starting to do here is to outline what people believed was the preparation that you need in order to begin your worship. And we have a lot of these rules and traditions even today, this idea of being suchyam. Sucha, being clean. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji says that if your hand is dirty, if your feet are dirty, if your whole body is dirty, then what do you do? People would go and cleanse themselves. Be ready to present yourself. Be ready to begin the act of worship. And how would they do that? The next line, Pani Tota Otras Khe. Pani means water, Tota means to wash, Utras means to remove, Utras ke. So the dirt, the filth is removed with going into the water. Yeah, notice how Guruji is saying that you wash dirt with water. Yeah, normally you would think you'd wash it with water and soap. But here they're talking specifically about washing yourself to gain some sort of purity through water. So Guru is talking about holy water. That's about washing your body. Guruji then says, Mut paliti kapad hoi. Mut here actually means urine. Mut means urine. Paliti means to be stained. Kapad is clothes, your cloth. Mut paliti kapad hoi. If your clothes, if cloth has been stained with urine. So what do we mean by that? Now, scientists have discovered that when we sweat, the chemical composition of sweat is very similar to that of urine. And in both sweat and urine, the body is trying to get rid of ammonia, which is chemicals that the body can't process. And although the chemicals vary in their quantities, essentially every time you sweat into your clothes, your clothes are getting that ammonia, the same as being stained with urine. So this whole idea that your body and your sweat is basically trying to get rid of anything that it can't digest, anything that it can't process. So these are all called waste products of the body. And if your body is getting rid of these waste products, where are they going? They're going onto your clothes. So the idea of meditating, the idea of presenting yourself for religion, for religious purposes, was that you bathe your body 
and you also wear completely clean clothes, ones that aren't stained. Certainly any excrement, any urine on your clothes would be seen as completely inappropriate for worship, completely impure for worship, not suitable at all. So it's not suitable if your body is dirty and it's not suitable if your clothes are stained in any way. So what, what does Guruji say is normal behavior? Mut paliti kapad hoye, de sabun leye oye doye. Given soap, de sabun, oh toliye. So here, toye and leye is toliye, is to wash it. Oh means that, that is washed when you take some soap and wash it with that soap. Given soap, cloth can be washed. Pariye mat papa ke sang. Guru Nanak says that you can clean your body before you're going to start your, your worship, your prayers. You can clean your body. You can even wear completely pure clothes. But Guru Nanak Dev Ji asks a more fundamental question. What about the dirt that you're carrying in your mind all the time? What soap are you going to use to clean that filth? What actions can you perform? How will you purify your mind? So before we look at the answer to this question, we need to understand a little bit more about what do we mean by Bob? What do we mean by this? How is that a filth? What is it? How do we recognize it? We can recognize when our body is dirty. We can recognize when our clothes are dirty. But how do we recognize when our thinking is soiled, is stained? What does Pap look like? And what does it stain? One is the dirt, which we need to recognize. Second, we need to understand what is it that's getting dirty. Guru Sahib in this line says, Pariye mat papa ke sang. So let's look at this word mat. This word mat and specifically this spelling of mat with the sihari. In Gurbani, this has been used to mean at least 11 or 12 different things. So let's try and understand which version of mat are we talking about here. The word mat has been used to mean intoxicant. In Gurbani, there's another word for that, which is mud. Mud means wine or anything that can intoxicate you. So being intoxicated or the intoxicant itself, that is known as mud and has also been known as mat. Mat also means mata, mother. In Gurbani, the word mat has been used to mean mother. In Gurbani, the word mat is also used to mean don't. It's common in Hindi, for example. We would say, Esa mat karo. In Gurbani, we would say na karo. But in Hindi, we use the word mat, don't do this. So, having an understanding of Gurbani, we can, we can rule out these three options. But I said there was 11 or 12 different versions of this word mat. So, if three of them are not related, then the others, which are seven, eight of them, are all to do with the mind. The word mat has been used to describe seven or eight different things within the mind. We've come across this word before, manne surt ove man bud. And we said consciousness is divided into four things. One of them is man, which is your thoughts, your emotions, your desires. 
One of them is chit, memory, awareness, surt. One of them is bud, intellect. And one of them is mat, which is also called ahankar, your identity. So mat can mean your own identity. Mat has also been used to mean bud, which is your intellect. Mat is also used to mean gyan. We talk about gurmat, manmat. There it means the guru's wisdom. Are you following the guru's wisdom or you are following your own mind's wisdom, your own mind's thinking? Math is also used to mean memory. So even though consciousness, the word in Sanskrit, the word in, in Punjabi is antekaran, which is consciousness. That's broken up into four parts. The word math has been used to describe each one of those four parts. Memory, desire, prayer or worship, that's another word for mat. Faith or opinion. So you can see that when it comes to translating this word, it's very difficult to translate with a degree of confidence. So we need to use the whole line, we need to use the whole verse, we need to use the whole composition of Japji Sab to try and understand what is it that we're talking about here. And where have we heard this word before in Japji Sab? Only once before. Mat vichya ratana jawahar manak je ik gurki sik suni There for simplicity we used mat to mean the mind. Within the mind are the diamonds and jewels and rubies if you listen to the teaching of the Guru. So here we're saying this thing called Mat is filled with Paap. If we take the simple meaning for now of the word Paap, we would say Paap means sins. So what is it that is filled with sins? The common translation that you'll find in all of your books, all of your translations of Japji Sahib will say that the intellect is filled with sin. Your thinking is filled with sin. But it can also mean your very self-identity is clouded, is dirtied by sins, 